The Stone Age Gamer includes a lot of bad language. Cover your mother ears. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to episode 114 of the Stone Age Gamer Podcast for the week of August 26th, 2016. I am Chris Randazzo and joining me as always is the real face of evil, Dan Ryan. Evening everyone. Tonight we're going to spend a few minutes talking about the games we've been playing lately and follow that up with some talk of the stuff that's been, some stuff that's been in the news. But, you know, before we get to all that, here's your weekly reminder that you can email us at mail at geekade.com. Let us know what you think of our show, what topics you would like us to discuss in the future. Just say hello, whatever you like, because we always want to hear from you, the listener. So now on to business. Dan, how you doing? I'm doing well, sir. I'm doing well. Things are, uh, things are turning the proverbial corner, heading in the right direction. Um, I was able to... Everything's coming up Millhouse? Everything's coming up fucking Millhouse. Well... Perhaps everything will be coming up Millhouse. But, like, we're up here in the Northeast. Um, last couple of weeks in the Northeast, it has been hotter than all fuck outside. Like, just... Yeah. Yeah. There hotter we go. than Norfair. <laughs> Jesus. How's that and, for like, a pull? <laughs> you can't go outside without a Varia suit here in New Jersey. You really can't, dude. Like, it's... <laughs> fucking insane i used to live in texas and it wasn't this bad like it's been just awful the the caveat to that though is that it's been an excellent time to sit inside and play some video games and i've actually been able to catch up on a game that i bought for like uh, i was on sale for like 10 bucks like six months ago and i was finally able to start playing batman arkham knight oh nice. so you know, four years late <laughs> to the party, but you know, jumping into uh, to Batman that Arkham was like, Knight and um, geez, what was that? That was like, it was Asylum City Origins Knight, right? Yeah, so is the fourth yeah. one. All right, it's the fourth one, but like Origins it doesn't really count in the overall trilogy because Rocksteady wasn't. I don't know mm-hmm. if they didn't develop it or if they just weren't like it was the Rocksteady B team. That developed it, but I'm like, pretty sure they didn't develop that one. Yeah, it's like it's that was not... that was like a Warner was all like, we need to make another one, and they're like, we're not quite ready yet, guys. And they're like, you need another one this year, Christmas time. <laughs> Fuck, get get it done, damn it. Make it for 3DS too. Blackgate, sure, do it. Live the yeah. dream. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, it, it it did. It was like one of those things where the the parent company doesn't really understand that, like people make this and it takes them time to do so they're going to do well so you know uh, and i didn't play origins yeah it was uh let's see it was warner games montreal and mm. splash damage mm. who the hell is splash damage <laughs> to the internet let's see what are you known for splash now damage. did you while you're looking this up chris uh, did you play asylum or arkham city uh, I played through a chunk of Arkham Asylum. I was really enjoying it, but the Metroid Prime trilogy came out at about the same time, mm. and so I decided to kind of split my time between playing the Metroid Prime trilogy and doing that, and I wound up just completely ignoring Batman because I was so enthralled with the first Metroid Prime again, and I never actually went back to it. I think I have that, and I have Arkham City somewhere in my collection, and uh, yeah. I... No. I- <laughs> I should say, well, so yeah, I re- I greatly appreciate that. I mean, I'm a huge <laughs> Batman fan. I'm I I loved the feeling of being Batman in that game, like just jumping around and hiding and freaking the hell out of people, and just that the combat system was was a blast. Uh, it's just so like, fun. You're surrounded by enemies, so and you just you just beat them all like Batman would. Yeah, like I I was just playing a little bit before the show with uh with my with Katie with my daughter, mm-hmm. and um. Like, we're going around in detective mode, and, like, the one thing, the the main gripe that I have with Arkham Knight is that being an open-world kind of game, there is so much filler and padding in this game mm-hmm. that, like, there's there's a lot that distracts you, and there's a lot that just takes away from the overall story. And it it really does honestly feel like 
we needed to make this game 20 hours long, but we only had a hour. I know here's a bunch of bullshit that doesn't add to the overall story, right? But, you know, in, in between sessions, because the game's really scary, right? Scarecrow is in this one. He's fucking terrifying. And mm -hmm. my kids don't like watching that part. So I was like, all right, you know, we'll, we'll play. We'll go. This, is this the same kid that's all like Five Nights at Freddy's? No, no, that's, is that's Penny. And the greatest Penny thing loves ever? Five Nights at Freddy's. Katie's still, okay. Katie's still not a huge fan. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so like, it's, okay, we'll go down and we'll uh, we'll hunt down the penguin, right? So we go to the penguin safe house and you turn on the detective mode, and like, lo and behold, twenty five guys in the room, and she's like, "Oh, daddy, I don't think you're gonna be able to get him." And I was like, "I'm fucking Batman." watch this shit kiddo and like jump down there and she's just sitting on the couch go oh my god oh my god that's amazing like she's so into it the combat is so fun like they nailed that aspect in these games it's it's wonderful to play as batman but um yeah i like arkham asylum is so great because it is so self-contained within this very small world and small map you know, like, there, there's a lot of nooks and crannies and intricacies and secret path, paths and a bunch of other bullshit uh, in our Asylum. But it's a fairly linear structure. And um, Arkham City kind of blew that up a little bit and gave you a lot more freedom of choice. And Arkham Knight is just, is just huge and expansive. And it covers, like, three different sections of Gotham. So, like, three... Basically, there's, like, three islands that mm. make it up. And... Um, there's a lot to do to distract you from the overall story. Kind of silly because, like, the the main story is that Co is going to uh, his newest, most lethal version of his fear toxin upon Gotham. And you only have tonight to stop him. So while you're chasing after him, you're like, fuck, I'm going to take a detour and solve this serial killer murder that's going on right now. Or I'm going to go get the penguin while this other really important shit is happening. <laughs> like, it's it's kind of silly and breaks it up. But, I mean, overall, like, playing it on the PS4, the game is fucking stunningly gorgeous. It's raining the whole time, which is shitty. Because <laughs> it's just like, all right, enough with the rain. I get it. Like, I know it's the same night, but enough. It makes things all shiny, though. It's a great graphical effect. It's a great covering effect for, like, some bullshit that you didn't feel like drawing in there. Like, I get it, <laughs> you know. But. Would recommend, I take it? Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely would recommend the game if you've, uh, if you've never, like, played through them. If you've, if you've never played any of the Arkham games, um, you don't have to have played the first two to, to enjoy this one. There is... Mm. There is some stuff with the Joker that has that's a little bit predicated on your knowledge of what came before, but they do a decent enough like job. like jumping into the middle of a comic book run, you know? It's yeah, yeah. It's, assume things happened. Yeah, assume something happened and, and just go forward. Um, but yeah, I mean, it. I think this is a great, you know, a really, really great addition to this franchise, especially if the rumors are true that... Um, the HD collections will be coming out sometime later this year of uh, Asylum and City. You mean the the H or D? The H or D? Because yeah, they were I HD mean, to begin with. Yeah, they really were. But like, I, there's some. There was a collection that popped up on like a German yeah, it's a remastered Amazon remastered edition. Yeah, yeah, like the German Amazon site, and it was like, oh shit, take it down, fuck, you know. Um, which we might be talking to, I don't know, I didn't look at the news stories we're going to talk about because I'm a bad co-host. Are we going to talk about the uh, the other PlayStation leak? Oh, the the PlayStation Slim thing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll mention that. I forgot that, I actually forgot to put that one in the notes. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> that one's just hilarious. Um, yeah, we'll get to that later. I, I'd love to go back and play um, Arkham, Arkham Asylum. Um, that was actually the one that excited me the more than once it went more open world because I didn't mind being confined in the asylum. I thought that really added to the experience. And you know me, I don't love open world games. Well, so. and, and neither do I either. Like, I don't, I don't understand why, why every game, every big budget game, and it has to be open world now. Like, it just... It, mm. It just doesn't make any sense to me, man. Like, Batman does not need to be a GTA clone. Like, Batman, Arkham no, Asylum works so well because of the space, you know, because of the yeah. linear story. 
Now, I will say that there is some merit to the idea of being Batman in an open world situation, as in, like, and this is just a game about being Batman, but then, like, mm-hmm. trying to shoehorn a, a, a narrative into open world games, I think, is where I start to get a little lost. But, I mean, then again, we'll, we'll see how I, how I react to Breath of the Wild. So, I haven't well, disliked yeah. a proper mainline Zelda game in a long time, and actually, really ever, so I can't imagine that this one's going to really break that trend, but it is it is slightly scary to me, because it's it's an open world game, and, and even seeing the trailers for that, like, they've been doing a bunch of gameplay videos lately, mm-hmm. and seeing, you see more seams in this game than you saw in any previous Zelda games. You know, there's lots of mm. little graphical things where, you know, he'll jump and attack somebody, and the mass of that creature will kind of shift him a little bit out of place. It doesn't have that layer of polish that Zelda games usually have, because it can't, because it's an open world game. It is go anywhere, right. do anything, and the more options you throw at it, especially on a system, the power of the Wii U, you're going to run into those kinds of limitations. So, I don't know, It's it, it still looks very good to me, but I, I would, it, one of these days, uh, going back to Arkham Asylum would definitely be something I'd like to do. Well, yeah, it, it's one of those things that ends up, you know, on the bucket list of... Well, fuck, I didn't finish yeah. this game, and I know I should, you know, and thankfully it's been hotter I'll than I'll just throw it hell. on the pile. Yeah, right, and there's the pile over in the corner, <laughs> man. So, I mean... So I had a pretty fun experience. So speaking of PlayStation 4, mm-hmm. um, I have I finally got to spend some time with the PlayStation 4. I've never really played with one before. Um, and after Long Island Retro, I went over to um, my buddy Mike Sheridan's house, as, as you know him, uh previous SAG co-host, Mike Sheridan, and um, we played Street Fighter V, and this was my first experience with the PlayStation 4, and so uh, I was... Bef- no, go ahead. Before you say anything about the game, I'm, very, mm-hmm. I'm actually very curious about this. What is your reaction to the controller? Oh, I liked it. It was fine. Because, yeah. like, like, oh my god, amazing, but it was, it was nice. It was a nice little cleaner version of the, the DualShock. See, to me, I thought it was, oh, my God, amazing. Like, I, that, I, I, I have never used a more perfect controller. Like, it fits in my hands so well. <laughs> it, was, it, was, I mean, I know it was a very nice controller, but, I mean, the DualShock was a very nice controller. It's like, it didn't That's strike true. me as, oh, my God, amazing, because it was just like, well, this is a nice little evolution of the DualShock. I was glad they went through with it, because PlayStation 3, they, you know, started to think that they were going to have a new controller. Like, nah, screw it, DualShock. DualShock, DualShock, DualShock. Yeah, well, yeah, and yeah. This, you know, it was it was nice. I didn't really, I did wind up having a lot of problems with. Um, I kept accidentally hitting that touchpad while I was playing it, and that really? was pausing the game and stuff. I kept, and me and Mike were both doing it over and over again. I kept trying to do something, and my thumb would wind up tapping the touch button screen pad hmm. thingy, and you know, pausing the game or some crap like that. But I mean, that that just could be me not being used to it and me just being clumsy with my thumbs. Who knows? Yeah, I, but, um, I've I've never run into that problem, but I mean, I suppose I can see like a, in a fighting game, one as intricate as Street Fighter needs to be, mm-hmm. I could see kind of maybe slipping off into that. But yeah, I can't remember exactly how Fair I enough. kept doing it, but I know it kept coming up. <laughs> um, and I'm also really not used to that thing being there, but it's a neat little it's a neat little option for you know minor touch control type things. Yeah, the Street Fighter yeah. Five was so really what did you think of the game, man? I, I was mm. not impressed at all. Um, and sucks. really, uh, my second experience with PlayStation 4 was during the uh, marathon that we had. Well, I saw a little bit of PT. and Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I also remember not being very visually impressed with Street Fighter V. Like, right. it looks nice, but it doesn't look much different than Street Fighter IV. That, I think that's fair. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's, like, a little more detailed. I do dig the art direction. I didn't care for any of the new characters. None of them really impressed me in the least. Not the way that the new characters... And, you know, Street Fighter Four when they introduced people like El Fuerte and uh, Hakan mm-hmm. as Sea Viper and, and, and Jury, like, they were really cool. But, I mean, they made uh, friggin' Charlie into a, a, a quarter circle character. He's not a charge character anymore. And yeah. That was kind of the first thing that rubbed me wrong, and... I don't know, man. I didn't like the system as much as, um, like, the EX system in, in uh, not the EX system, the the this the soul charging system in Street Fighter Four, where you you know do that right. charge move. Right. 
I don't know. There's something about this game that was just not feeling right to me. It it didn't. It wasn't necessarily bad. It was like Mario Kart Seven for 3DS. Like <laughs> just it's slightly to the serviceable. left. Yeah. <laughs> it's just I would rather play a different Street Fighter. You know, if if I had the option, I'd play three or four. You know, sure, I'd play any of them other than that, except for Street <laughs> Fighter One, because nobody wants to play that. No, no, Street Fighter is fucking hot. The hottest of garbage. <laughs> And, well, and you're... fire up my TG16, <laughs> play some fighting street. <laughs> no, no, we're Brief. not. Why would you do that? Why oh. would you reverse the name like that? Never mind. That, not important. That should be on the next fucking pain in the ass a thon is having to suffer oh, through God. fighting street. But oh, God. anyway, pain. I, I think um, your criticisms are, are not uncommon with that game. It seems to have underwhelmed basically everybody that played it which is uh, fucking mm. unfortunate you know it, it was such a huge like in in we've gotten away and, and i think it's a good thing that we've gotten away from so much console exclusivity uh, mm -hmm. you know like it, it it's just it's bad for gamers overall you know when yeah it just ends up you know like rise of the tomb raider right came out two years ago for uh for Xbox One. Had a bunch the, of DLC. The X -bone. Yeah, bunch of stuff that came out for it. So there are people who legitimately paid eighty, ninety, a hundred dollars to get the full Tomb Ra Rise of the Tomb Raider experience on Xbox One. It's coming out this holiday season for PS four with all of the bonus stuff, plus exclusive stuff for like PlayStation users, and it's gonna the report I saw anyway was that it's probably gonna be cheaper than the $60 price tag because it's an old game now. And that, like, yeah. you're fracturing your user base, you're pissing people off. Like, it's just, I don't know, it's just not good. Other than first-party exclusives, obviously, exclusivity yeah. is kind of bullshit. But that being said, Street Fighter V being exclusive to PlayStation was kind of a huge deal. Like, it was, oh, shit. Like, it was a big why get. would they yeah. do that? You know, why would Capcom do This must be amazing and built for the controller and built for the network and the whole thing and everybody just seemed to go eh <laughs> it's a game it's there yeah i mean here's the thing like numbered street fighter games don't come along very often right no they don't they t that, that's a, that's a big deal when they when they actually increase the number it's a pretty significant deal mm -hmm. and you know the jump from 1 to 2 huge 2 to 3 huge Three to four, uh, huge. Four to five, not so much. And it was more like a jump to the left. Yeah, it was. It was just a little bit over there. And then, and the, the and whole way they're the right. handling the roster and nothing, no, and okay. making you know, the way you download them kind of piecemeal and like this. I wasn't really digging that. Just was not digging that whole style. I like that they are bringing back some more characters from three. It was cool to see Alex in there. Mm -hmm. um, I I do like the fact that they made some of the stalwart characters a bit different, you know, like Ryu and Ken are so genuinely different yeah. now. I, I really appreciated that. Um, you know, Guile's new look is a little uh, off-putting. Like, I don't know why he's wearing a suit, but whatever, sure, why not? <laughs> and I, I dug some of the moves that they did with Guile. And, you know, Guile is my, mm -hmm. he's my guy. He's my favorite character. Um, he's your Guile? Hmm. He's my Guile. <laughs> mm. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, there was the, the dude with the turban that spins around a whole lot. No. Just, that was dumb. Yeah. Uh, he's got a friggin' Dragon Ball Scouter on. Sure, whatever. <laughs> uh, I mean, they, I saw Jury was back in there. Who else was... I, I honestly, God, I can't even remember any other new... Oh, there was the stupid wizard guy. That was dumb. Yeah, that, that he's was weird. dumb. Uh. He looks dumb. He sounds dumb. He's... No, no, I'm <laughs> not okay. No. He looks like a character out of Street Fighter EX. Yeah. Ugh, like, no. that that round of rejects, yeah. It's just, it didn't have the soul that Street Fighter 4 did, you know? It didn't seem like it was a game that was really built. Street Fighter 4 was a huge step because Street Fighter 3, a lot of people thought was a misstep because it wasn't as accessible as Street Fighter 2. Street Fighter mm -hmm. 2, anybody can play Street Fighter 2. Mm -hmm. Street Fighter 3, especially once you get to Third Strike with the parry system... It's a whole thing, right? Like, if you go against somebody who knows the parrying system, you are effed. Yeah, you're done. But you're done. S Street Fighter Four, on the other hand, was accessible to everybody. They made that work the way Street Fighter Two worked, and also made it deep enough. Cause 
to to have the kind of matches that you would see like evo finals and street fighter 4 are so crazy to look at you watch two pros go at it it's insane i don't get that out of street fighter 5 they didn't have the accessibility and as somebody who doesn't play street fighter super technically like when i play street fighter i i just basically i work off of the bread and butter stuff right and that's not really what five seems to be built around. It's really built around being very technical and building combos and whatnot. And sure, that's great and all, but that's not really what I want out of my Street Fighter games. And honestly, if you're going to number a Street Fighter game, you had best blow blow the doors off it. You know, <laughs> you better make that really. Yeah, impressive. you better at least have a fucking single player mode. Yeah, you better have a single like, player mode. Better, you're crying out loud. You better ship a complete game. I, it's. There, there really hasn't been like I think since since really Street Fighter Four because even as much as it breaks my heart to say it, Marvel vs. Capcom Three, while fun, yeah, right, like Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom Three too, like fixed a little bit, but yeah. like still not. It just wasn't the the majesty that was Marvel vs. Capcom Two. So like, really since Street Fighter Four, there has not been that standout fight game released for consoles. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, I, Killer Instinct I know people is like sad. Yeah, it, I know people like the new Mortal Kombat games. Yeah. They're I'm not one of they're them. They're all right. <laughs> yeah, I I don't like I don't love them Injustice, like the DC fighting game fun Ugh, for yeah. a little while because it's comic book characters and it's that's serviceable. It's okay like I need a new Soul Calibur. That's what I need. I need a new soul caliber in my life. And there were there were there was the faintest glimmer of hope like last week somebody found I think on somebody's like deviant art profile or something like that uh some some new images for up-resed versions of soul caliber characters and they were like, "Oh shit, there's a new soul caliber coming." And he was like, "No, it's just a portfolio." But like, no. fuck man, a new soul caliber? That'd be nice. That's huh? what I need. You know? Soul Calibur jumped the jumped the shark with Star Wars characters, and then they were just like, "Yeah, we're gonna leave this alone for a while." But no, it was so I'm, you're, fun, you're though. Absolutely right. It was I mean, so fun. They, they, it's not, like they keep fuck it. Yoda was awful. It was broken. <laughs> Darth Vader was fucking dumb. That just made me want a Star Wars fighting game using the Soul what the Engine. Hell? Like seriously, guys. No, no, we're gonna put Star Wars characters in Soul Calibur. You. Yeah, How are I, you missing this? How are I you mean, missing really. this right now? You've got Star Wars license. You've got a great 3D fighting engine. Just, just, just do it. Just, just, do just it. print the money. Just print it. <laughs> just do it. You don't have to have Mitsurugi fighting Darth Vader. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. Oh, Soul no. Calibur, I miss you. I do. I do. Like, yeah, like they, they make Tekken games left and right. Like, what are we on? Like, Tekken 35 is coming out or something like that? I think I it's, I think so. And, like, the it, there is a new King of Fighters coming out, and, like, that's exciting because I love King of Fighters. But fucking I just... They need to hire I don't somebody to work on the art direction for King of Fighters games, man. Well... I was but, looking at yeah. that thing like, dude, this yeah. looks like a PS2 game. There's zero detail on these characters. <laughs> it's just not like good. watching the trailer, like... Good. It's so cool watching those characters, like, you know, really rendered in 3D. Because, you, know, like, you know, King of Fighters games, like, they were all gameplay, and they didn't give a single shit about no. the, the presentation. <laughs> they were using the same sprites for, like, 20 years. And I finally mm. goes 3D, and they're just they're just behind the curve. Like, man, just just talk to your friends over at Capcom. You guys are all pals. Make, the, make your new King of Fighters game look as good as the Street Fighter games look. Like, that's all you that's need. All, that's all we want. That's all we want. <laughs> and, like... I know, like the Guilty Gear, the Guilty Gear series continues to put out like really amazing fighting games, mm -hmm. but they're very hard to get into. Yeah, they're, they're not, a niche at best. They are not accessible even a little bit. And um, like Skullgirls, that came up for the PS3. Mm -hmm. That was pretty fun, but like there's just there's something missing in the fighting game genre, and I yeah. I don't know exactly what it is. Because, like, even when you say, like, the, the accessibility part of Street Fighter V, that's not all there is to it. Like, it is that kind of unquantifiable, like, it's missing the soul. But what yeah. that means exactly is really hard to be, especially for us. Uh, I mean, who the fuck are we? We don't design video games. but Exactly. You know, it, it's hard to, to pinpoint of, like, it's missing this thing that I want, and I can't even tell you what it is that I want, 
but, but I, I know, know when it's not, it's not there. there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Smash Brothers did really well, but that that really doesn't fill the same void. Like Smash Brothers is such a different animal. It really like I it, did it find really it... is not even the same genre. I you know. It's just yeah, like I mean it's competitive and that's kind of like where you draw the line. I yeah, did find like, it really it interesting. Really, Smash Brothers really does take its own its own niche. Yeah. I, I was oh, Evo was a few weeks ago, and it was really fun watching going back and watching the Smash Brothers finals because um, that has got to be one of the most balanced fighting games I've ever seen. It really because is. you go into finals rounds for most fighting games, you're going to see the same characters over and over again. There were everybody was using somebody different in Smash Brothers. Like there are top tier players for almost every character. It was ridiculous. The, the 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 champion this year played as Mario. Like that would never <laughs> happen in previous Smash Brothers games. No, never. But I'm watching like these two top tier like Mario versus Pit. You know, there was a great Mega Man player, just a great Mega Man player, and that makes me so happy to see. Like I was really just I almost wrote something about it just because I was so impressed looking at the finals and how few people were playing as the same characters. Like, there were no... That's awesome. Yeah, that that's the kind of balance that I really like to see. And you, you saw a lot of that in Street Fighter as well. Super uh, Ultra Street Fighter 4 or whatever arcade edition, the latest version. <laughs> I can't remember somebody went real far at, at Evo as Hakan, for crying out loud. And, like, that's right. just madness. And, yeah, that uh, Hakan is not easy to use, man. Like, no. That, that guy's fucking obtuse at best. Watching that guy killing people, like, just killing it with Hakan was crazy to watch because... Yeah, you know, when you see all those weird characters with so many different kinds of move sets, just killing it, it's it's so much fun to watch. And and Smash Brothers was really great for that. But it, like you said, it's just such a different creature. Like it may be part of Evo, but it is such a different type of thing to play and watch than any of the other fighting games there. Yeah, it, it really doesn't even count. And like I know PlayStation tried to do their like PlayStation All Stars Battle Royal, which. Mm wasn't very fun like it wasn't a very good clone of smash brothers like smash brothers exists a lot because of its nintendo like fanboy love you know like it really is a lot of fan service but yeah it's also a really well-made game (laughs) it is like sakurai is a crazy person an absolute crazy person the amount of effort he puts into making smash brothers games I, it's arguable that he shouldn't be doing <laughs> There's so much in those games. You, you'll never get all the trophies. You'll never see all the weird little stuff he puts yeah. in there. Like, I mean, even the, the brawl was insane. But then the fact that they, like, the whole thing with Solid Snake and Brawl, where you could go to this, his stage and do the codec things, and there was a different codec conversation between Snake and... And uh, Otacon for every single character in the game. See, that, that's that's insane. Now they've d- that's insane. That's absolutely And they got the voice actors to do the whole damn thing. <laughs> they did the same thing in, in Smash Brothers for Wii U and 3DS, except you can now do it with Pit and Palutena because there's no Jesus snake in Christ. the game. And it's like, it's ridiculous that they wrote a script for these characters to talk about every other character on the roster, and then they hired the voice actors from the game to come in and do all of it. It's madness. A dude the came in one day detail. and was like, really? I got to fucking talk about Marth? <laughs> <laughs> no, this will be the Quote, one. zero punctuation. Who the fuck is Marth, and why should unlocking him be considered a reward? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn it. Fire uh, just big, make me a good fighting show. game. That's all I want. I just want... Oh, man, I really just want Soul Calibur. I, yeah, I just want it, Soul Calibur. Just give me Soul Calibur 2. Like, just yeah, give, give me, me an, an HD version of Soul Calibur 2. And I will be fucking good as gold, man. That game is damn near flawless. It, it is yeah. Soul Calibur almost 2. perfect. I can't remember if I put more time into Soul Calibur 1 or 2. It was definitely... Because, I mean, Soul Calibur 1 for Dreamcast? Oh, shit, dude. Insane. There was nothing else at the time. No, no. Nothing could compete with that. But, uh... No, yeah, when I would you have could say... lizard man the shit out of somebody, like... <laughs> As a legitimate and the Dreamcast struggle. with fighting games, man. The Dreamcast was nuts. MVC two, Third Strike, Soul Calibur, Project Justice, Power Stone, like oh, fucking Power Stone. God damn it, geez. I love Power Stone. Why no game. Power Stone three. I, I right. Why is there no Power Stone? Did nobody else like it? 
Like, I don't know if... It just got a sequel, and then it got re-released on PSP. Somebody's playing it. I don't, I don't know that there's been any game that has better incorporated, like, environmental shit in it. You know, like, spinning around the poles and, like, flying into dudes. It's fucking... It's such a dope oh. game. I fucking love Power Stone. So much God fun. damn it. Anyway. All right, well, I mean, I had a bunch of other games to talk about, but, I mean, uh, we should probably take a break. <laughs> <laughs> and get to the but news I have to talk about before we pad. go all night. Damn it! I wanted to talk about Knuckles Chaotix, <laughs> but we'll just have to. <laughs> no. Just, just real quick, uh, I have to mention the Petathon. We did the pain in the assathon. Uh, I, I accomplished what I set out to accomplish as far as beating games. Uh, I really wanted to beat Knuckles Chaotix, and I did. It's really not a good game. It's it's worse than I thought it was. The further I went into it, uh, I did not beat Sword Quest Fireworld, uh, even with uh, Ferg from the Atari Twenty Six Hundred Game by Game podcast kind of helping us through. Of course, his helpful hints were like take the game and throw it in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. He's really He's not. not. My God, that is not that game was insane. But I do have to say that the whole experience was really fun because once everybody got involved like there were you know people looking through the instruction manual and they were reading the comic to try to get the clues like decipher because that's how they did it they put yeah. all these clues and the comic book came in it and it was it was really cool it was really really fun stuff um except the game was awful <laughs> <laughs> except everything uh, but really around my crowning... the game was excellent the actual physical game yes. itself utter dog shit <laughs> Minus a super sweet walking through a door animation, the game is <laughs> almost no redeemable quality. <laughs> oh, that is like but the my crowning has a nice personality of video game compliments. <laughs> well, they sure know how to walk through a door. Uh, <laughs> crowning achievement was beating Faces of Evil. Uh, my uh, Dean Dean's dad uh, made that Super Nintendo controller mod for mm -hmm. me. Um, uh, we got the plans from this super cool dude, uh, on, online. He, uh, he posted the plans to do it. Like you can get some from him eventually. Like I think he's making a bunch to retail, but he just threw the plans up on the internet because it's like, why the hell not? Like you, you want to, you want to do this for do people it. who are going <laughs> to, yeah. For people who are going to do that, like how many sales are you really losing by putting the plans online? Yeah, there's not a ton of us CDI Two. owners out there anyway. <laughs> but, uh, man, playing that game with that controller changed everything, uh, except for the fact that the game is really bad. <laughs> I didn't realize just how much grinding was involved. Like, we followed a walkthrough because I started going like, no, I'm just going to do this on my own. I'll figure it out. And then they started looking at the walkthrough, and they're like, no, you're going to want to do this because there's some real stupid stuff coming up. Like, <laughs> you had to farm snowballs. I farmed snowballs for, like, an hour. Just, Ugh. you had to collect 99 snowballs because when you go to this place, there's going to be monsters there, and you can only kill them with snowballs. Sure, sure. And, and if you don't have them, then you're screwed. Uh, naturally and then you beat the game by actually throwing a book at Ganon <laughs> he's just he's there in the room you walk in you throw a book at him fight over that's it <laughs> like now could you could you have gotten when you get to that part of the game if you don't know to throw the book at him like does it give you the option of like flail wildly like a jackass with your sword for 20 minutes until you figure this shit out or is it just oh did throw the book yeah no there's no 20 minutes like if you go there and try to swing your sword at him like you die very easily in this game yeah uh any bosses that you have to just straight up fight hand to hand are just ludicrously difficult because there's no um there's no like little indivisibility you get hit and then you got a second to get away mm -hmm. there's none of that if something's hitting you you're just losing life until you're dead and it's over in seconds so if you try to go it's up the against most Ganon, realistic video game ever yeah he'll just he'll just zap the crap out of you game over like that's it oh god fortunately there were no game overs per se they just send you back to the map and ugh <laughs> to make you suffer through it again yeah just go through that whole level again try not to waste all your snowballs try to hold on to your health keep your sword that shoots little laser beams ugh. and god it's so bad now 
And because the Pedathon was such a success next year, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat Zelda Wand oh, of Gamelon. God damn it. You're a fucking glutton for punishment. I will fucking, I will, uh, hopefully, if we can do it maybe a little earlier in the summer next year, um, I uh-huh. will play, like, Fighting Street or something like that. Like, I will fucking oh, man. do that shit. But, um, Brutal. With, with having the Super Nintendo controller mod for your CDI now, mm-hmm. l- are you going to go play other CDI shit? Like, does that make you want to play other CDI games? Or fuck that system and then the horse it rode in on? Well, I mean, there's not a lot that I'm interested in playing outside of the Nintendo stuff. I right. mean, it made... I played a, a decent amount of Hotel Mario like okay. when we just before the stream because I brought it with me just in case I had extra time after Zelda, which I totally didn't. But <laughs> I just wanted to try it out, and that game is completely playable it's not good but it's very playable (laughs) um i don't have a lot of other cdi games i have something called kether um and i have like you know some bullshit like sticky bear reading and uh the compton's interactive encyclopedia but as far as like tracking down games for it like um geez all right i have the three zelda games hotel mario compton's i have something called alien gate which was kind of a really dumb shooter like a really dumb shooter, <laughs> uh, I I I cannot imagine that game being fun no matter what controller you're using, uh, and that's pretty much it. There's like there's a, supposed to be a pretty good game of Tetris on there. Do I really want to t- track down a nice yeah, game of Tetris for my CDI? Not really. <laughs> a barrier is of there, Is there anything on the CDI that's like shit? You should have played this game. Like this game's fucking great. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's 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 ask the internet. Best CDI games, because like I'm trying to think back, and the first one that shows like, up is Hotel Mario. <laughs> oh well, Jesus Christ! I was gonna say like even the three. Oh, I know like that was a system, and like the Jaguar, but there were still games where people were like, "No, this is actually a pretty fucking dope game. Like you should you should actually check mm-hmm. this out." I don't know that I've ever heard of one for the CDI. I don't think there is. I don't think that because like the the games that are coming up, like Seventh Guest, okay, Space Ace, Mad Dog McCree. These games were elsewhere. I mean, yeah, Burn Cycle. Burn Cycle. I've heard of Burn Cycle. Was this a CDI exclusive or did this come out on other? Things? I think that was a PC game. I maybe possibly Burn Cycle. I don't know. Um, yeah, CDI, Mac OS, and Windows. Okay, yeah, so. I thought so. Yeah, like, that so, That yeah, seemed to be no, kind of their thing. Like, they had ports of, like, popular PC games at the time, like Seventh Guest and shit, but, mm-hmm. I don't know, wasn't there, like, a, a good version of Myst or something for the 3DI, or for the CDI, or was that 3DO? Probably 3DO. I don't, I, I can't think of Myst coming out on, on CDI. I don't see any evidence to suggest it, but... I'm not looking at an overall list of the of CDI games. But, you so, know, this is hardly worth our time. <laughs> so the so the short story long is no that <laughs> you don't want to play any other games with the controller. That's that's fair. No, see now I'm looking at now I'm looking at the list of CDI games. Uh no, there was no mist for this as far as I can. Oh wait, there was a mist for for CDI. Huzzah. Um, I think there was, a, to be fair, I yeah, think I there was a mist for, like, Nokia track phones back in the day. Like, n- mist was fucking <laughs> on everything. <laughs> mist came out on everything. Yeah, I don't, I, no. Surf City. <laughs> no. Uh, Vegas Girls. Oh, Vegas Girls. <laughs> Fuck. Sign me up. Who shot Johnny Rock? <laughs> so who Do cares? They have brain, really? Is Brain Dead 13 on this? Do they make one of those for this? Yes, Brain Dead 13 came out on CDI. That's That's worth my time. No, no, it's not. All right, fair enough. I, I was just curious, you know, like uh, that, that's a lot of work to put in to play a shitty Zelda game and like nothing else. So, yeah, I mean, like you've got to be a lunatic like me. Like I am, I'm obsessed with that franchise of games. I want to be able to say that I've beaten every game in the series, and um, I can tick one more off the list. I don't, I don't know if I'm ever it's like see, see faces of evil and wand of Gamelon are at least interesting like they're sure. horrid but you really you just can't wait to see what the cutscene is gonna look like when you yeah. find the next person. Zelda's adventure is gonna be brutal. 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it through that game in my lifetime. I just don't think I have it in I, me. I don't know that anyone does, dude. Like, I don't feel bad. You know? <laughs> like, I don't carry that <laughs> to, like, your grave rough. or anything. Like, I'm sitting there dying, like, ah, oh, fucking Zelda's Adventure shit. Why did you escape me? Like, you know. I'll probably beat that before I beat Arkham. Like, <laughs> what is it? No, it's, yeah, Arkham. <laughs> No, I was going to say, like, a uh, friggin', what was it, not Spirit Tracks, the other one, oh. Phantom Hourglass. I have actually, I've attempted to beat that game a couple of times, and it's it's sad that I made it through Faces of Evil before I made it through Phantom Hourglass. That's how much that game bugs me. <laughs> I don't know what that says Ugh. about you, but I don't think it's anything good. <laughs> Just be All right, everybody, we're going to take ourselves a quick break, uh, read a couple of commercials. We come back, we're going to do a rundown of some news articles. You're listening to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast here on geekade.com, so stick around. And now, here's a look at some of the other original content available right now at geekade.com. First up, with the Metroid franchise celebrating its 30th anniversary, I decided to count down what I think are the best moments in the series' history. With 30 years worth of games to choose from, it was quite a task to narrow it down. Between the baby Metroid hatching, getting the Morph Ball, the whole final battle with Mother Brain and Super Metroid, and everything else in between, there's so many to choose from! How did I do? Read Geek Hate Top 10 Metroid Moments to find out. It was a good article. I liked oh, it. Oh, thank you. I didn't agree. With everything, but I like that. That was a tough one to write, man. Next, uh, I, I imagine it was like that's that's a really hard thing to narrow down. Anyway, uh, we have a new podcast here at Geek Aid. It's all about mutants and not talking about the Ninja Turtle variety, Aww. but Marvel's X Men. Each month, Jonathan and Patty are going to gather and talk about what's been going on in the world of X Men comics, movies, television shows, and well, anything else X related that may be happening out there. Check out the latest episode of Mutant Musings, Three Girls, One Monet. It's actually the first episode, but, it's, you know, it's also the latest. It's also so the latest. So technically I was correct. <laughs> Spot on. Then. <laughs> well done, bully. <laughs> bully for you, sir. I don't say bully enough in regular conversation. I don't think anyone says bully enough, to be quite honest. <sighs> Then, things are happening earlier and earlier every year. There are already Christmas decorations up in some stores, and kids haven't even gone back to school yet! Hunter is drawing the line at Oktoberfest in August, because when your local but when your local liquor store is stocking shelves with fall beers, what summer beverages should you still be enjoying? Find out in The Imbibing Scribe. Hold the line! Finally, sports video games, right? We all love them. Of course we do, but Matt Sizemore probably loves them even more than you do. He's written an entire article about it. What are his favorite sports games? How does he feel about rugby? The answers you seek can be found in the Think Tank. The Think Tank? Shit. In an article called, It's in the Game. Wait, what is? Let's find out. Read it. You know you should. You can find all this great stuff, plus tons of other articles, videos, podcasts, and more right now at geekade.com. finish reading the commercials and there's your behind the scenes look since we're not doing this on twitch anymore ah <laughs> suck it all right so let's, let's talk about some, <laughs> let's talk about some new stories wait is that suck not what i'm twitch. supposed to do <laughs> sorry there's your giant media title company. right there <laughs> suck it twitch <laughs> listen formerly justin.tv i know who you are don't fuck with me i used to watch fucking yankee games in florida on you and then you went all legit, you prick. 
Anyway. Anyway. All right. Uh, first up, so somebody recreated Super Mario Brothers in an Excel spreadsheet. I don't have anything to say about this. I just wanted to bring it up. It's just when when you see that as a headline, it is a sentence that needs to be repeated out loud so that you can make sure other people heard it and you are not fucking losing your shit. <laughs> I seriously cannot believe. Like, why would you do this to yourself? <laughs> I don't like and looking at it. Like, looking at the image of Super Mario Brothers in Excel, I have to wonder why it hasn't been done before. Hmm. Because, like, yeah. it's perfect. And it is perfect I medium for, I think the reason like, it hasn't been done before, because it's excruciatingly time-consuming. Well, yeah. And horribly inefficient. Fucking Excel is a shitty, awful, horrible, no-good program. Like, please use it's something else. It's one of the worst game programs. <laughs> it really is. If you were trying to make a video game, Microsoft Excel is just the last thing you should consider. Just the use last. Use a graphing calculator before. For real. Like, at least you could make it go like, ooh, it goes up and down and shit. Like, Excel is... It's a thing that exists. These bags really weren't designed for carrying tacos. They, re- <laughs> they just weren't. <laughs> Just I'm not saying the tacos aren't good. <laughs> Just say it. I really want the mail. <laughs> oh. Speaking of eating tacos and strange things having to deal with the Super Mario Brothers uh, universe, uh, this video has been floating around the internet for the last couple of days of a hamster navigating the Super Mario level. Man, like, fucking Miyamoto, dude. I don't know, like, I, it may sound bold to accuse that dude of, like, coasting on his laurels, but, like, since Mario World 1-1, shit has been downhill for that guy. That is, like, the fucking epitome <laughs> of... Su- but, like, no, I mean, he's had some phenomenal success, but think about how iconic World 1-1 in the original Super Mario Brothers is and all the iterations and versions and shit that has been made of that level in particular... Everything else on his oh, career yeah, is a downhill. Much... That's sad. <laughs> that sucks. It's it's a it's a downhill in relation to pop culture icon- iconology. Well, but, uh, I mean, it's it's a, it's a gradual decline. But you know, <laughs> I would argue that <laughs> there's much of Super Mario Galaxy, or there's much in Ocarina of Time that's technically uh, more impressive than level mm-hmm. one one, but. Uh, I guess you have a point. I don't see a fucking uh, hamster crawling through the fucking woods and getting the master sword and shit. <laughs> I would pay to though. I, uh, not much, but a little bit, like five bucks. I'd be like, yeah, yeah that's fine. It's like a circus side show. Sure. If that were like a roadside attraction, I would stop. $5. Oh, there's a fucking hamster doing Zelda. Shit, I gotta pull over. Like, that's a thing I would stop for. Probably not make it back out alive, but you know. I, Priorities. You got to budget hands, and there you go. I'm excited about this next one. Well, speaking of a, uh, <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, speaking of a, uh, Mar- <laughs> Shigeru Miyamoto probably sitting in his house thinking, "How did I get here?" Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the freaking prime minister of Japan showed up dressed as Mario uh, at the Olympics to introduce the Tokyo uh, 2020 Olympics, and it was really. That was only one piece of the puzzle, man. Did you watch that whole video? Did you see the whole thing? Oh yeah, yeah. Hello Kitty and like the the anime characters. The whose Inazuma names I don't Eleven, know, I think. Like... Was that the was that what the the taco yeah. one is? And um, yeah, I think so. Uh, Freaking Pac Man with a boxer. Like, I, I didn't know Pac Man was a boxer. Like, All right, sure, let's do it. He's got gloves. But like, l- l- fucking, uh, huh, huh? The Prime Minister of Japan, a fucking industrialized country, showed up in Rio at the Olympics, a worldwide event celebrating athletic achievement, was like, fuck you, video games. That's right. (laughs) Like, showed up as Mario. Like, what is the American presidential equivalent to that? Like, if the Olympics were going to be in America in 2020, like, would our next president... Assuming, sorry, Democratic leanings, assuming it's Hillary Clinton, 
would Hillary Clinton pop out as fucking who? Like, what's the identifiable American? Like, would she pop out with a baseball bat and, like, start shooting people GTA <laughs> style? Or, like... <laughs> Like would she would she jump out in a fucking like Dallas Cowboys jersey and have John Madden like fucking announcing her like catching a pass from Brett Favre? Like what the what is what is the American character? Um Bubsy? Geez. Would she pop out in a fucking <laughs> oh. exclamation point t shirt going, What could possibly go wrong? And fuck it while Dean hangs himself and we all get sad. <laughs> Like, oh, shit. Could possibly go wrong. The Olympics are being hosted in Camden. That's what could possibly go wrong. <laughs> we're going to all the big cities. We're going to Camden. We're going to Flint. I don't know, fuck, Jesus. Camden, like, New Jersey, 2024. Make it happen. <laughs> Man, like, that is such a weird... It's such a weird fucking thing that the Prime Minister of Japan popped out in a Frio costume at the Olympics. I love came the out of a pipe. Came out of a pipe. The dude. sound effect and everything. Like I am the an fact Olympic that Their slut. whole introduction and... of the this is Tokyo. They didn't go with traditional Japanese culture. No. They went with modern Japanese pop culture with Hello Kitty and Doraemon. It, that's really impressive. I, I think that's extra, extraordinarily cool. I wish the Tokyo Olympics started tomorrow. I want yeah, to too. see this like right fucking now. I am so. I want to see what that. What else? I, are they going to continue with this? You know, are they going to continue with this kind of like general theme? Like, is the the? I mean, obviously, the Olympics are going to be the Olympics. They're still going to be doing exactly what they do. But are they going to kind of theme things around Japanese pop culture? I'm really curious to see where. They if go I with don't this. get a fucking Godzilla roar somewhere in there, I am going to be really pissed off. Just putting that out there. Oh man. But like that would be. I mean, I would have to. Olympic Godzilla running away. <laughs> I would have to imagine they would because, like, when the Olympics were held in Beijing, um, and, which were then handed off to London, like, the London theme kind of came out at the end there. And then when Rio, when London was handed off to Rio, they came out in the very carnival, dancey, you know, high energy spirit that the Rio opening ceremony captured. So if, I would imagine mm -hmm. Japan will follow suit. And we're going to get this fucking crazy opening ceremony. It's going to be amazing. I fucking can't wait. I'm so excited Seriously, about it. Seriously, if they're going to do stuff like that, that is going to get some ratings. Oh, dude, it's gonna <laughs> that is, people are going to watch the crap out of that. Awesome. So awesome. Hopefully, they will watch the crap out of it while wearing their Xbox onesies. Ugh, no. Oh, God. What in the actual hell is this? Why is this a thing? I, I, I'm, I'm actually a waiting for an answer, Dan. Why is this a thing? I, Explain it to me now. I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. These models look I, like idiots. They do. Like they do. These, it's like they may as well be wearing snuggies. It's like half Ryan Phillippe standing next to like. Sort of Kristen Bootleg Stewart. Bootleg Felicia Day. <laughs> Bootleg Felicia Day <laughs> in a fucking knockoff onesie. But it's like, it's not even a fucking real onesie. Like, it doesn't... Oh, god damn it. This shit just makes it's me It's got extra angry. big pockets to fit your Xbox controllers in. And you can keep your phone in your arm sleeve. I would be pissed off if this were PlayStation or Nintendo as well. Like, this isn't Microsoft hate. This is yeah, just no, this is stupid. I'm I'm impressed that somebody you know was like, oh, onesie, Xbox One. Let's put that together. Like, <laughs> you spent so long wondering if you could, you didn't stop to think whether or not you should. <laughs> and you shouldn't have. Just <laughs> you really no, you shouldn't have. This is as bad as resurrecting raptors. It really can is. we just talk about that for a quick second? We're gonna make a dinosaur park, and then we're gonna make raptors. <laughs> like you can't even see them; they're in this closed-off bin because <laughs> all they want to do is kill things. You can't look at them; what they serve no purpose. No, they don't. Why did you breed raptors? <laughs> my favorite. God I think, damn it! I think my Hammond. My favorite internet meme that like went around years ago was the uh, the raptor supervisor that gets a credit at the end of uh, Jurassic Park. His name's like Chris Smith or whatever. 
I, I fucking totally forget the name, but like it just popped up with Raptor supervisor Chris Smith, and then underneath of it, it was like, <laughs> "Really, Chris? There were Raptors in the goddamn kitchen." <laughs> <laughs> worst job ever again it, you you bring up a good point if you're gonna make uh, shouldn't there be some dinosaurs on your dinosaur ride like oh we made murder machines though so that's cool like yeah yeah i mean like the t-rex the the dilophosaurus your gallimimuses sure go go nuts but like let's breed the greatest predator in history and then for no no real gain just to say we did why not and then let's crossbreed it later in jurassic world oh, <laughs> oh god damn it jurassic world okay it's part raptor Good. fuck the i don't know have we talked about jurassic world because it's got the best line ever uttered in film when he names when chris pratt names all of the fucking raptors for the little kid and the little kid looks at him and he goes who's the alpha and he turns around and he goes I am, or you're looking at him, kid. Like, fuck yeah. That is the most, like, here's my dick, look at it. Like, the best line. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, you predictable bastards. Oh, Jurassic World. All right, uh, there was another thing about DualShock and wireless compatibility, but I really want to just move on to, to, to the Prime, oh, to, to, to the real meat to? situation here. We really do, because, uh, all right, so... Metal Gear Survive is a thing, and it's a um, uh, Metal Gear character. It's in the Metal Gear universe. A bunch of people get sucked up through a wormhole and put into an alternate reality with zombies or some craziness like that. Um, yeah, no, really... no, no. You can't. You can't just gloss over that shit. You can't be like, yeah, there's some Metal <laughs> we'll, we'll, Gear we'll characters. We'll go into it a little bit more in detail. Get sucked up into a wormhole. We'll go into it a little bit more in detail. Really, here's what I think happened. Okay, here's how. Here's how I think this came about. Uh, two years ago, E3, uh, Nintendo showed off a trailer for Metroid Prime Federation Force, mm -hmm. and it was just reviled by Metroid fans everywhere. And someone right. at Con the heads at Konami were just like, we can top that. I want to get a piece of that action. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. That really... So, Dan, is... plot synopsis. H hook me up. <sighs> I'm, I'm just going to read it to you because I can't even... I, uh, you can't even. <laughs> it officially takes place in an alternate alternate timeline to the Metal Gear Solid story. The idea is Big Boss, or whoever, <laughs> never walks out of the hospital he's transported to after the bomb at the end of Metal Gear Solid Five: Ground Zeroes. As <sighs> such, Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain doesn't happen. Instead, for some reason, wormholes wormholes fucking open up and suck up all the soldiers from mother base and put them on some fucking island in covered in zombies and fucking monsters fuck now metal gear fuck is you, Konami. insane like, like metal gear is is certifiably insane but it's but it's always been reality. grounded in a yeah it's always been grounded in a, a, a ever so s very warped perception of reality but sure I mean, a, a kind of sort of reality based thing this is i know i know we say it every week on every episode but konami really does hate you they like they, they have they, to you, listening to this show they hate you they want you to suffer it... Oh boy! Like the trailer is fucking terrible. <laughs> fucking! Oh my god! It just—if you could see his face right now, guys. If you could see his face, you could actually see the spirit breaking. <laughs> if if this is what you're gonna do, stop. Just stop. Just do the pachinko machines. Just do. Just... The pachinko machi machines are fucking fine. That's okay. Make a pinball machine. I don't give a fuck. Make slots. I. It, Metal Gear Solid the dryer. I'm fine. With that. <laughs> <laughs> give me a foxhound branded microwave. I don't care. But like to just, it just takes years, and it's not just me personally. But, like, it takes years 
of a dedicated fan base and just shits all over them. Just completely shits on everything that they care about. And there are people that take Metal Gear way more seriously than I do. Like, there, there are people for whom their entire life is Metal Gear. And I think sometimes these companies forget that once they release these properties out into the world, they mean something to people. And, like, that may sound sort of ridiculous to say, but, like, if Nintendo made a Mario game where Mario had a fucking gun, people's lives would be ruined by that. Legitimately ruined. It would fuck people up. You have... It's, it would be like Captain America hailing yeah, Hydra. Like, or having a Metroid game with giant you just, chibi characters. You have a responsibility to the people that made you successful. You just do. And if you're going to fucking shit on their dreams, just don't. Because you don't have to. Konami is obviously not interested in making video games anymore. Right, like I mean, that's that's clear. Well, see, that's just that's just it. I'm pretty sure that the people who came up with this think this is a great plan. I'm sure that some suits in an office are are the the bean counters are just looking like zombies. Zombies sell Metal Gear. That's a brand that sells pretty well. Uh, how we put the two of them together? Who cares? <laughs> Wormhole. Do it. Done. Sold. Make it happen. Like I am sure that the people who decided to make this game think. They're genuinely perplexed that the the community isn't just lapping it up. Even, I would I would be even a little bit more okay with it if like if you had spun some sort of yarn about the fox dive virus being mutated and creating zombies somewhere like that. Fuck that big. There you go, Konami. That makes a little wormholes suck every dick, Konami. Every single one. Blow everyone you can possibly find. <laughs> <laughs> it's just God damn it. And like <sighs> I'm I I have a similar problem with uh when you call like a Metroid game a Metroid game and it doesn't have Metroids in it. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they appear somewhere in this one, but I'm I'm afraid that there is some sort of Metal Gear in this because the last shot of the trailer, if I remember correctly, was like some sort of big thing walking towards a bunch of people. And I'm like, well, that must be the Metal Gear. Um, but if there is no Metal Gear in this, then then, then stop it. Just, you know, just stop. If man. Lara Croft isn't raiding any tombs, don't call it Tomb Raider. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> if she's just sitting there playing Parcheesi, then it ain't Tomb Raider. It's, it's a little... <laughs> Lara Croft plays Parcheesi. Which I might even buy that game. Which really, why isn't that a right? thing? I mean, uh, it's just, man, like, it's so, it's it's always so interesting to me that these giant successful corporations somehow end up being successful in spite of themselves. Like, they're trying to fuck it up, and we just keep like, no, have more money. It's fine. It's cool. It's We're good. You know, it just oh god it, damn. It is nice that there is a Japanese company that makes Capcom look certifiably sane. <laughs> I mean uh, that like their decision making skills looking pretty good right now. Yeah. That, These guys are starting to make Sega seem sound, you know? We we might have to do a podcast on the collapse of Konami. I mean I don't I mean seriously, this is this is more offensive than Sonic Boom. It really is. It really is. It's oh god. Especially when something is so singularly identifiable with its creative director. It, it, mm -hmm. Hideo Kojima is Metal Gear. To make it without him is just nonsense. It would be like if someone today were to make a sequel to A Clockwork Orange now that Malcolm McDowell is fucking old and Stanley Kubrick is dead. Like, that, it would just mm -hmm. shit on the legacy of that film. Like, something... That is culturally well, it, significant and important. Like, it was like I don't fucking... want to say that I, I can't say that I completely agree with that sentiment. Just because, I mean, look at Force Awakens. You know, there was a time when people would say you can't make Star Wars without Lucas. I mean, I, I just had a different example on it. Oh, like even Halo. Remember when when Bungie wasn't making the next Halo game, and and all the Halo community was just like, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. And now 
it doesn't even matter like that Bungie doesn't make Halo anymore because those the Halo community thinks the games are perfectly fine. It's possible for a talented... It would be very interesting to see a different... Like, look at Metal Gear Rising. Like, that sure. wasn't really a, a Kojima joint. That was Platinum Games' take on Metal Gear. It was a Spike take Lee a, joint, actually. It was a Spike Lee joint, yeah. <laughs> you take a, a... Finding a different developer to take an interesting... Like, he, what's your take on this video game franchise go for it right that would be really interesting i would love it if konami thought to themselves all right who should make a metal gear game and instead they were like all right who do we have in our garage well these guys have been making a zombie game for a while uh, <laughs> the kids these days they love zombies and military shooters stuff. go for it call of duty metal is gear so zombies. successful with the call of duty zombies which actually it is well, but... it is Walking Dead. Kids love that. Love their Walking Dead. Let's let's jump on this uh, zombie fad while it's still young. Wait, Wait. I just uh, and maybe uh, I don't know, man. Like, I think there are just there are certain things that I just I feel personally like. Eowyn Coffer is is a fine author, right? But he was tabbed to finish the Douglas Adams trilogy in six parts Mm. you know yeah and it's just not right like it's just it is so singularly identifiable by that one creative voice that Mm -hmm. that continuing that i don't man it just it just doesn't fucking sit right to me but the biggest problem i have with it is the fucking wormholes because yeah just that's it's just such an obvious cop-out And it's just like, it's just such a fuck you to Hideo Kojima. And, you know, and I don't know him personally. Like, I don't owe him anything. You know what I mean? But but that is a man that has brought and his team have brought a lot of joy to my life through those games. And and to see his legacy kind of shit on like that, it's just it it riles the, the fucking hippie in me of like down with corporations and, you know, up with indie. It is. I mean, it is just. It's not. I like again, just like my feelings with Federation Force. Until I play it, I can't say for sure that it's going to be garbage. But uh, it certainly doesn't look. It looks like just generic zombie shooter. Mm-hmm. We've played this game like a lot. Hundreds you don't need to of attach times. the Metal Gear name to it. Like, Hundreds that's, that's of not, times. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's not fixing things. And I'll give it a shot. Begrudgingly, I will give it a shot. But. Yeah, it's how I feel about Federation Force. I'll I'll give it a shot one of these days. Not going to be happy but, about it. Yeah. God damn it. Who knows? May, maybe they'll surprise us. I don't think they will. It's like, <laughs> it's kind of like that, that hard have, line in Indiana Jones. People think yeah. Indiana Jones Forest is terrible because there's aliens in it. It's like, well, all right, that's a conversation for another time. But there's a lot of people that just draw that line. Yeah. Like, that's why that movie's bad. Forget everything else in the movie. It doesn't matter how good the rest of the movie is. The aliens, aliens bad. bad. Yeah. See, and I disagree with I, those this people. Is that, this is that kind of hard. I also disagree with those people. You know. I'm glad you and me are on the same page there. Next week, Indiana Jones, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> fuck longer than the fucking film itself. <laughs> that movie's dope. I don't give a shit what anybody says. <laughs> I mean, really, are aliens that much less plausible than the wrath of God in a box? Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> or then a, a fucking really ancient knight who shrivels away into a skeleton or a dude ripping your heart out or the fucking. That, yeah. Like the plausibility of that underground uh, rail system alone. <laughs> the th- I love mo- the mine carts like I, who builds a loop to loop. Come like, on now. <laughs> I fucking I love Mola Ram as much as the next guy, but fucking relax with your bullshit. <laughs> Worst part of that movie was Shy of the Beef. <laughs> anyway, all right, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna call it here. I think we're gonna call it. We've been at this for a while, uh, so that's gonna be our show. Thank you for listening once again. You can get in touch with us at mail at geekade.com as well as all flavors of social media that we inhabit. You can like us on Facebook, find us on Instagram at Geekade, subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels for more of our latest video content follow us at twitter at the underscore geekade you can also find us individually i'm at geekade chris dan is at geekade dan 
And if you're interested in more information about anything we discussed tonight, be sure to check the show notes if I bother to do them, because I'm tired. <laughs> and while you're at it, if you're super nice, um, you can skip a line. You can also subscribe to this <laughs> and any of other wonderful <laughs> podcasts. That's on iTunes and Stitcher, where if you're super nice, you can leave us a review because any and all feedback is welcome and appreciated. We'd also like to thank Mark TDK Knight for our show's theme. You can check him out on SoundCloud or Bandcamp or his website, which we will have a link to in the show notes. Again, always remember to keep your eyes on geekade.com, where we post something new every stinking day. Any final parting words for everyone, Dan? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> now I'm just sad. <laughs> sad about Canadian. I'm going to go play more. There it is. Now I'm just sad. I'm going to go go Damn play Ryan. more pad. Yay, quest. Good plan. Woo! Thank you again. Thank you again for listening on behalf of Dan and myself. Keep playing games. <laughs>